On tour, you get a certain amount of downtime, and you look forward to that downtime. But then the management and the label and all these different parties involved, it becomes difficult to execute certain things. Music happens to be one of those things. So on tour, we, we try to cram in spots where we can get some work done. We bought some portable equipment, and whenever we need to record some shit, we yell and find frequency and say, hey, freak, set the shit up. <laughs> The freak sets it up no matter where we at, a hotel room, a bathroom, a bus. Freak has set that shit up in a Burger King, <laughs> Denny's, Waffle House. We came up with a song the other day, and the next day, Joel's handing people his headphones like, yo, yo, check this out, man. I'm like, this nigga laid a verse to this shit that we heard last night. The irony in that is I'm sitting here talking all this shit. I'm normally the very last one to do shit. I don't know why it turns out like that, but it does. See the problems in Slaughterhouse? These guys rap so phenomenally. Make me not even want to rap, B. So I'm just back here chilling. <laughs> Dope. In Seattle, we did the meet and greet after the show. And so Kino comes up to us before the meet and greet. He's like, yo, I got this kid out here. He's handicapped. He's in a wheelchair. Kino says he raps and he would like to rap for y'all. So we go out there and the kid starts rapping. Though he was handicapped, the kid was dope. I'm certainly not just saying that because it was handicapped. The kid had flow. He was rhyming. I'm gonna write six on a plane. The way I'm not even coming to. Put myself <laughs> in the <laughs> chat. Something like running shoes. Yo, can I, can, can I have that? Yeah, I can have that? Are you sure though? You're not gonna sue me. Alright. <laughs> Put a smile on all our faces. It's just funny how hip hop is like this universal language. And if I ever fall in love again, I'll make sure that the lady is a friend. Yo, y'all ain't gonna keep letting me get wet, <laughs> <laughs> Slaughterhouse logo on his arm. He wanted all our signatures so he could go and get those tatted on his arm. But I think that's pretty cool that the music has an impact that way. And I think people will be shocked to see just how passionate most of the Slaughterhouse fans are. Shit about to get crazy though now, B. Now, these next few months, all of the tour, the little Michael McDonald, me getting arrested, jail, Best Buy, all of that shit is cute, but these next few months, I've been waiting for you cocksuckers for years. Check this out. Let this be my fucking address to the rest of these niggas. All you fucks that fucking pent us against the wall, you fucking pricks that fucking blackballed us, you pricks that fucking identified and recognized our fucking talent level and did all that you could to make sure that we stayed as close and fucking intimate with the bottom and the basement and Loserville for as long as we possibly fucking could because you've done it to so many other people in the music business and you've gotten away with it for so long because the giant eats the ant and Goliath versus the little guy who just raps and has no fucking resources and he's just passionate and he's just trying to fucking feed his family and just make something of himself because he's got absolutely no schooling and he dropped out and he was on drugs and he's just trying to better himself and rap is one of the only places where a kid who drops out in the fucking ninth, tenth grade with no GD can prosper and become successful and be a fucking billionaire. All of you niggas, watch. It's about to get good. Yeah. Keep all of that shit too. <laughs> Give a fuck who's sleeping right now? <laughs> they ain't gonna have to wake the fuck up. Hi, I'm Royster59, and what I'm gonna do right now is wake up everyone. Fuck you guys! Wake up! Hey! Chocolate baby! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Joe Button with your cartoon character girlfriend. <laughs> Hello, Joel Ortiz, your fucking fat Puerto Rican. 
Hello, Kino. Fucking powder. <laughs> I love Kino. He's my favorite right now. I love all you guys. You fucking faggots. <laughs> Get your asses up. Nobody give a fuck, nigga. Get out your bunk and fight me. Niggas don't know how fucked up my life really is, you know what I'm saying? When we used to live out here when we was young, because my moms used to move around everywhere. Everywhere. So when we lived out here, my brother had a five-man crew. And they all worked at Carl's Jr. Oh, well, he worked there? Yeah. So I used to wonder why niggas was paying $20 for a 99-cent sandwich. <laughs> Them niggas was putting the 20-piece crack rock in the motherfucking hamburger. <laughs> Them niggas was selling crack from Carl's Jr., nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dog, no, real talk. Real motherfucking talk, dog. It's like, I was, I was so unhip to the shit because I was young, nigga. I went inside the fucking Carl's Jr. one time and I was like, that hamburger don't cost $20. <laughs> My brother was at the register like, if you don't shut your little ass up, <laughs>